tough questions, new insights, diverse perspectives. Welcome to Questions of the Day with Fanuel Muindi. All right. Uh, welcome back to Questions of the Day. Now, if you missed it, the second Starship launch uh, from SpaceX just took place yesterday uh, morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And to say that it was exciting will be an understatement because there was so much going on. And I'm so glad to be joined by a space science communicator, Lazaro Bosch, who um, he and I will t talk a little bit more about the launch and especially looking at the coverage uh, between the traditional media and the space science community. Laz, welcome to QOTD. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited um, to talk about the launch and the launch was a great sight to see most definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so before we get into it, uh, I actually want us to take a look at this quick compilation that the team put together um, that just showcased the highlights, right, of how the headlines uh, were, especially post, we had we were about 24 hours post launch, and then looking at some video footage as well from the space uh, science community, the communicators. Uh, so hold on, hold on your hats. Uh, uh, let's take a look. Hey, hey, Mark S. House with you here, and the day has arrived where SpaceX has proven that all of those updates to the launch site and the launch vehicles have paid off. Yes, on Saturday, the 18th of November, 2023, that day, my friends, the newest record-breaking Starship full stack flew for the second time ever. And oh boy, was this one improved from the last, yet still a nail-biting spectacle. Oh my God, it's lighting, there it is. lighting. There it is. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So Laz, give us your impression. You watched the launch. Uh, give us your high level uh, views and impressions. Sure. So I think that video sums it up really great as uh, a way to start setting the tone of what I felt as I was watching um, Everyday Astronaut was a stream that I predominantly watched. And thinking from when we first did an earlier segment on SIA TV, we saw um, the first uh, Starship launch and how bad um, all those events unfolded and how much has improved on um, these science communicators and how they're engaging the public. So this time around, um, for everyday astronauts specifically, he was able to add thermal cameras. He found more partnerships with the Planetary Society, which is enormous, that donated cameras. There was much more better definition of resolution, of audio quality and engagement on how he's interacting um, with the audience by posting comments that are moderated on a news sticker feed and adding on to the level of excitement. And that's really what the science community is wanting to do. When you tune into these live streams, you wanna bring awareness, you wanna inform the general public of what's going on. And just like SpaceX, as they're improving on these launches, they're as a communicator, as these streamers on a technical, uh, more broadcast level, they're also improving their streams with their equipment and, what they're and how they're engaging and the tools they're using, the partnerships and the crowdsource funding that is making all this happen. So from what we're seeing on the broadcast level on a civic science standpoint, it is improving from a SpaceX level, it's also improving. I think the headlines are much more focusing on an explosion, on a rocket um, blowing up, on maybe Elon Musk, maybe SpaceX, um, more than the historic launch that is one of the heaviest, most powerful rockets to launch and on the first launch, not all the rocket engines are lit. This one not only successfully lit every single 
more consistently a rocket engine, but also is separated into a second stage and those six rocket boosters um, took launch. So I think right now, like we were hearing on these streams from multiple um, science communicators and other inf uh, space science influencers uh, that we just want data. We want to see these stages progress to build towards the ultimate goal of what this mission is. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for just bringing up this point uh, on the traditional media, right? Focusing on the rapid unscheduled disassembly as the term uh, goes. Um, can you share some more insight on that divide that at high level seems to be present, right? That the traditional media would focus and as you saw on those headlines, right? Uh, explosion, failure, some people use those terms uh, as such. Uh, why, why the divide and is there a lost opportunity here, especially with traditional media who have a broader audience, right? In terms of engaging them and bringing them into the process that is undertaking, that these engineers and scientists are undertaking to try to get this really complex uh, vehicle into orbit and beyond. Yeah, so I think with traditional media, there's always a struggle because they want to report first and the lack of access. So it's time and access that's limiting for them. So on a timely fashion, they want a report of what's going on. But when they report in a first timely fashion, it's difficult, um, especially with lack of funding or lack of access, to know the technical standpoint of what leads up to this. So if you don't have a technical expert, if you don't have technical, um, if you don't have effective communicators that are in these technical fields that know how to break this down, anyone on a mainstream media as a space reporter, a science reporter, are going to uh, then focus on what is going to get the most viewership, what is uh, visually what we're seeing and what actually happens, versus the science communicators that we're seeing that are really, um, everyday astronaut was eight kilometers away from the launch site. They're on site. They are working with partners and professionals in the field. They are talking to people and as they're prepping and building up hours before this launch, before the sunrise, explaining what these terms are and getting enthusiasm. And I think just the intention is different. So mm -hmm. with these partnerships, with these communicators, they are passionate about the subject. They are focusing more on the limited resources that they have, but providing the most awareness and most community building engagement versus a traditional media that they have to, they focus on advertising, they focus on a timely matter of, of newsworthy um, importance, and they understand their audience might be different than these, these science communicators that are more neat, um, have much more bandwidth to engage, versus a, a traditional media that they have to focus on a broad um, spectrum. Maybe they may have um, unique visitors that are really focused science enthusiasts, space enthusiasts, but if you don't know what SpaceX is, you don't know what Starship is, you don't really care how it impacts your day to day. You're just focused on what happened in the visual aspect of it. Yeah. And I think what, what you're alluding to here is that the depth, right? So the traditional media might have, they're not going into the depths, right? They will cover the breadth, something blew up, uh, whereas the space science community. And then later on, update it with details. Right. And then they will go in much deeper depths. And, and I think you mentioned everyday astronaut, for example, uh, who was really providing some detailed insights, right? Um, and you see a lot of that community engagement that, that is happening live, right? And so I understand you were watching everyday astronaut. Tell us about your experience just uh, as, a, as a viewer. So as a viewer, I think it's just really exciting, not just as a space enthusiast, not just as a space science communicator, but I think the work they're doing is really telling. I think from a storytelling aspect, they're inspiring the next generation of how to and bringing to people's audiences from their wherever they're watching, whatever device, whatever connectivity around the world. They're being bringing excitement. They're being informative. They're being professional by making sure they know all the terminology. They know all the events that led up. They try to be consistent and follow launch schedules. And everyday astronaut has these uh, this mobile van that he's converted into a studio. So the amount of funding, the amount of time, the amount of effort is really valiant there and showing and telling for the, the audience that's engaged because there's an understanding of what the audience expects and what they want and what they need and what goals as a communicator they're building towards. So I yeah. think that's uh, really important um, to highlight. And they also describe it um, during the launch, why they do this, why the funding is so important, um, how they get to it. They um, also promote their behind the scenes. They post behind the scenes of how to explain their process that they're not just um, somebody on a Twitch stream, on a YouTube stream, on a social media stream, explain these things. 
Um, but also they compare and contrast uh, different past uh, launches from the first Starship launch to the second one and hours before what that preparation looks like. So I yeah. think that's where you draw the behind the scenes curtain and people really find it more authentic, more genuine, seeing the process and then dumbing it down with visual graphics, bringing in communicators, um, bringing in the different streams, mentioning and referencing other communicators that are in that space and talking about that as well. Yeah, because even with the everyday astronaut, I mean, he ended up developing his abilities and technical expertise, right? And bringing together a team. trial and error. Because mm -hmm. now he has a whole team that is allowing him uh, to do this. Yeah. I wonder though, if there's an opportunity here for for the traditional media, should we say, to collaborate with these space science um, enthusiasts, Marcus House, right? Uh, everybody else. Right. Uh, we have also Astro NASA Space Alexandra. Right. Space Astro Alexandra is another one who really, she, she just is, what, does a wonderful work. And these are just a few of many others, right, that are doing this work, both here in the US and more broadly. Is there a way that that could forge these partnerships between the traditional media and the space science community, uh, those communicators? And if so, like from your point of view, like how would that play out or how could it play out? And that way it's like fruitful for both parties. I think from a digital outreach perspective, as these digital tools are becoming more widespread, I think it's very important that they um, change from a traditional model of reporting news that they'll, they want to hear from a SpaceX representative, they want to hear from government affiliates from FAA, from Coast Guard, because they have to evacuate from local, state, federal level, all these right. um, processes and make sure everything's good to go. So I think, although that's important, hearing from SpaceX, hearing from such and so, um, so, so and so uh, officials, I think you'll get way more engagement mm. and much more authentic eyes on the ground. And it only benefits the science communicator because they're getting on these larger platforms increasing their organic audience, their reach. And for them, they only they, their incentive is reporting what they're seeing, their passion for this, and bringing awareness and engagement to these niche communities. And from a traditional media standpoint, they're now tapping into the engagement that they would like to see and that they need to see, and is helping bridge some digital gaps and some com communication gaps of how do we get the technical stuff right how do we get the enthusiasm, the engagement, meanwhile, still reporting newsworthy um, um, the events that are going on, like these launches? Right, right, right. And so we're now getting to a stage where I wish I could just talk to you for a really long time, uh, Laz. And so that means we have to keep coming back, OK? Because you're, we, we love your insights. And so we do a rapid round here. So let's see if we can keep these uh, answers in the shorter <laughs> sure. uh, version. So uh, for viewers, right, there are now multiple ways to just stay up to date with what's going on. Because you have traditional media, you have all these space science communicators that are doing this work. How do they, and, and I'm sorry to ask this question this way, but so feel free to expand on it if you, if you, if you must, but how would they navigate this landscape, right? How, how should they, and what's your advice for them? I think uh, as a viewer, if you're, no matter if you have little to no knowledge or you have a ton of knowledge, find someone that you like and do your own research. I think it's important to, of course, read the traditional media and read the articles, but then see what the online conversations are, um, see what online engagement and communities are. So planetary society, professional organizations, see what they're saying, then see what these live streams are saying. There's a reason why it's trending and there's a reason why they get so many hundreds of thousands of viewers um, onto the streams and then there's uh, see what the traditional media is saying. So do your homework and I would say um, discern what it, and what is effective uh, mm -hmm. communication and what is the, um, the conversation ongoing and what information is available as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think for, and you alluded to this earlier, um, in terms of those like engaging multiple parties, right, multiple stakeholders, right, from, from those on the ground and, and I I think it'd be fascinating, right? Versus just hearing the explosions, something happened or something exploded. Um, we know about the local uh, population that is there, right? And how is it like living there, for example, right? Uh, how is it like to get the attention for the for the FAA who is reviewing, right? All the the, the flights. Um, I believe it's FAA, but could be wrong. Yes, correct. Um, 
in terms of that process, right? We just hear they are holding up, they're doing the review, hearing their perspective. So I think that to my earlier question that there is an opportunity, right, for the two to co coordinate and collaborate, right, in covering the landscape so that the multiple vantage points are heard. So what is your advice for both the traditional media and space science community as they are seeking to get these multiple vantage points? Yeah, so I think for a traditional media standpoint, don't disregard the underdogs that are in the field, mm -hmm. um, because I think that there is an effective and a cost-incentive cost, a, a cost way to do this. Um, so I do believe that there's saving costs and they're reaching new audiences and new viewerships that they haven't been able before. And in this day and age with so much uh, information and access um, to that kind of information and tools, I think that there needs to be a way that traditional media can reach out to um, these uh, science communicators that are more than willing um, to be put on this more larger stage and be able to explain these needs. Meanwhile, the partnerships, the viewership, the crowdfunding is essential for these kinds of communicators to keep doing what they're doing. So I think there's um, some sort of goals and incentives for both sides. It's just a matter of finding someone to bridge those gaps and make these connections happen so both parties end up winning in the end. Because at the yeah. end of the day, whether a, a launch is successful or it fails or whatever someone's interpretation of that is, it is successful because it's bringing people together to bring their science literacy to a new level and engage new audiences and give them more information in an entertaining and professional manner. I, there's no better way to wrap up our segment today, Laz. Um, I look forward to our next opportunity to 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 engage, and we know there'll be a third launch and the fourth and the fifth. So we, you and I will be here back again. Uh, last so thing. Thank you. <laughs>